everybody. So this one's been a long time coming. I've been trying to figure out how to keep these videos informative without boring you all to death. If that's what I wanted, I put on a Pearl Jam record and let's face it, nobody wants that. Instead, I'm gonna show you guys how I mix drums, but I'm gonna break this up into a few episodes so you can reference different parts of the kit by episode. Now, how I approach drums is by this philosophy. Five elements make up the whole. I break the kit down five ways, adjust those pieces, and then combine them to make a larger sound. And the elements are kick, snare, toms, overheads, and room. And this is where a lot of the new guys get discouraged with live drums. The individual mics aren't going to give you quite the whole picture. The mics must work together. A close mic on a snare drum is gonna sound very small, but when you combine that with the overheads in the room, that's when the drum begins to take on ambience and depth. So here's a quick recap on what I use to mic up the kit. For the kick, I've got an Audix D6 and a Yamaha Subkick. Snare gets a Grinelli 5790 and a Studio Project C4 held in tandem with a Wilkinson clip and an Audix i5 on the bottom. Toms get the Sennheiser MD421, Overheads are Roswell Mini K47s, and the room mics are a pair of cheap Apex 210 ribbons. Now let's start with the kick drum. The first thing I've got to stress is that if you want a clicky kick sound, you must get the drum sounding that way to begin with. The mics can only pick up what's there. Now to get that, I prefer plastic beaters with either a Remo Fallon Slam or a Danmark kick pad. Both will do the trick and there's a slight variation on the sound. I've been into Dan Mars for the last couple of years, but I might be switching back to the Falum Slam as it's got a slightly more pleasant top end. Now I'll be using Reaper for these demos. I figured it's best choice since a lot of you guys are using it. And the first thing I load up is a mastering limiter. What? Really? I thought those things were supposed to go last. Well, we tried this trick back in 2010 with Final Stages Game Over and we got fantastic results. It's far easier to mix through the master and hear how things are going to turn out rather than mix and then add on a mastering limiter later and then have to remix the drums because the mastering limiter killed them. My weapon of choice is the Slate FGX. I've played with a bunch of different mastering plugins and I keep coming back to this one. I'll let you guys get a good look at my settings here. I'm not trying to destroy the mix, just give it a bit of a boost on the back end. YouTube has pretty much put an end to the loudness war, so if your mix is cranked, they will turn it down for you. So why even bother? Just back off the limiter and let the song breathe. Secondly, I'll throw in the Slate VCC Gray into the main bus as well. Four to one ratio, slow attack at 30 milliseconds, and the fastest possible release. These are classic settings for a metal mix. This keeps the bottom end from getting out of control. A word to the wise, keep your eyes on the gain reduction. You really don't want to stomp down on the mix any harder than 4 dB. And be careful when you start adding more instruments into the mix. Now that we got that set up, onto the actual drums. Generally, I'll gate the close mics quite heavily and use the overheads and room mic to fill in the gaps, as it were. Fortunately, Reaper has an extremely cool gate that's free. It's got a look ahead feature that will open the gate before the sound comes through, allowing for the full impact of the transient of the drum. And I'll set a look ahead on the kick anywhere to three to five milliseconds, one millisecond attack, and adjust uh, the threshold and release to taste. We want to hear the sustain of the kick, but not get carried away by the cymbal and snare wash. Next up, the Slate Virtual Mix Rack. These have been my go-to plugins for years now. The EQ and compressors are outstanding, and you'll find that Slate has included some great presets that actually work. Don't use them exactly, but start with them as a jumping off point, they're awesome. Tweak them and adjust until you hear something you like, and be sure not to be afraid to crank the shit out of the knobs just to see what happens. 
For kick, I'll add in a bit of eight to 10 to 5K for snap, scoop the mids out a touch, and then roll off the extreme bottom at 40 hertz or so. I'm not going for a massive low end with this mic. This is the attack mic. I love the sound of the Slate 401 of the close mics. I'll set that to about four to one, slow the attack down to let the transient through and go with a fast release. This really gets the kick to cut. Try different EQs before and after the compressor and see what works for you. Just remember to save often when you're making adjustments, just in case you go too far and screw something up. Next up, I'll bring in the Yamaha Subkick. There's not much going on with Gator EQ here. I'm just rolling off the top end with a bit of Reaper's built-in EQ. Again, roll off at 40 hertz and push up the fader until it fills out the bottom. Now you got the mics working in tandem. Just make sure you flip your phase to make sure what works best. Now, I'm gonna show you guys a favorite trick of mine that dates all the way back to the 80s. Reaper has this great feature and that's a built-in frequency generator. And what we're gonna do is use it to generate a sine wave at a very, very low note. Next, we'll add in a gate after the generator and the signal chain. And here's the key. We set the gate's sidechain input to come from the kick drum. That way the gate opens in unison with the kick. And when we combine the tones, we get a massive bottom end happening. Now for you guys at home who don't have access to a sub kick, this can be a great trick to round out your kick sound without having to rely on samples. It's not the same as a sample blend because your kick is still the focus and it still sounds like you. So that's how I approach the kick. Leave your comments and questions below and I'll see you in the next episode when we look at how I approach mixing a snare drum. Take it easy. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this episode. If you like the content, please support the channel either at my SMG shop or through my Patreon. If you want to see more, hit one of the playlists. Thanks for watching. I'm out of here.